Today, in our Tech Shorts Foundation series, we're going to talk about AWS Batch, the service responsible for carrying some of the largest workloads ever run in the cloud. It's quite a different experience from other HPC clusters, so we'll walk through some concepts to help frame what it does and how it works. Let's get started. AWS Batch is a container-based, fully managed service from AWS for running batch-style workloads at any scale whether that's one job, hundreds of jobs, or even millions. You interact with the AWS Batch API uh, service endpoints to specify and submit your work items or jobs. You can do this either with the AWS Management Console, our command line utility, the AWS CLI, or even your own applications when they leverage the AWS Software Developer Kits or SDKs. Since AWS Batch is fully managed, you don't need to run anything in your AWS account to start using it and sending jobs to AWS Batch. It's just there whenever you need it. AWS Batch has two major functions. First, it's a job scheduler. It acts as the main interface for scheduling your workloads. Batch takes your job requests, places them onto a job queue, and then manages the life cycle of those requests from a pending state to starting to running and finally to finished. Should your job fail for any reason, you can tell Batch to automatically retry the job. This is handy in the case of an unexpected hardware failure or in the case of when you're using spot instances and an instance gets reclaimed. You can tell Batch to selectively restart jobs from a spot failure, but not any other conditions. Second, AWS Batch is a resource orchestration engine for your compute. Part of your job request is specifying the amount and type of compute you need for those jobs. For example, the CPU architecture, how much memory you need, and whether to use an accelerator device, such as the GPU. Batch uses that information about the jobs in your queue to dynamically and efficiently scale compute resources on your back. Once the queue is empty and all of your jobs are complete, Batch will quickly scale down those resources. Since the cloud operates on pay for what you use model or pay as you go, AWS Batch helps you to optimize your runtime cost by only scaling up resources when there are jobs in the queue for your actual need, and then scaling down those resources once the work is complete, and you pay nothing. Speaking of cost, AWS Batch itself is free to use. You're only paying for the underlying compute and storage resources that your jobs utilized. AWS Batch leverages containers for packaging an application along with its dependencies as a single executable. We'll cover how to containerize your application in a later video, but for now, all you need to know is that containers are a great way to increase the portability of your applications and hence the reproducibility of your analyses. Now that you have a high level understanding of the AWS Batch service, let's dive into some of the details of how you work with AWS Batch. Before you can start submitting jobs to AWS Batch, you need to define a few types of resources. First, you define a compute environment. A compute environment represents the aspects of computing resources that you'll be running your jobs on. Examples of the types and items that you can define in a compute environment are the underlying container service. Batch supports both Amazon Elastic Container Service, or ECS, and Amazon Elastic Kubernetes Service, or EKS. You can also specify the minimum and maximum number of vCPUs across the fleet of instances that are running your jobs. You can specify whether you use spot instances, and if so, what percentage of the on-demand price you're willing to pay for those instances. You can specify the virtual private cloud networking space, or VPC, in which to launch instances. This includes private VPCs as well that are not accessible to the internet. Second, you define a job queue. Job queues are placeholders for your job requests and are linked to one or more computer environments that it can send jobs to. The default job queue is a first-in, first-out execution model, but you can define some pretty sophisticated scheduling policies. We'll cover job queues and its fair share scheduling capabilities in much more depth in a later video. Third, you create a job definition, which is a template of what the job requirements are. It tells us the application you'd like to run, where to grab that container, the security credentials you'd like to associate with the job when it executes the data volumes that it can point to and how to access them within the container, and finally, environment variables and other properties that you may want at runtime. Now that you've created a compute environment, a job queue, and a job definition template, you're ready to submit and run your jobs. You submit a job request by referencing the job definition and the job queue to use. 
you can optionally override some of the defaults and parameters that were defined within the job definition, but you don't have to. AWS Batch sees that there are now job requests in the queue, and it starts allocating those compute resources for them to run on top of. When that compute is ready, Batch places the jobs on the compute resources it allocated within that compute environment. At the end of the job, most applications will write out a result to some resilient storage, whether that's a database or some parallel file system. In this case, the application that we've run writes out results to an Amazon S3 bucket as an object storage. That concludes the high-level overview of AWS Batch. Let's review some of these major points. AWS Batch is both a job scheduler and a resource orchestration engine. It is fully managed, cloud-native service that integrates with other AWS services, and is optimized for throughput and cost. It makes the high scalability of the cloud available to you for your workloads. We see customers across all sorts of industries leverage Batch for their workloads, including drug discovery and genomics, computational fluid simulations, financial risk modeling, and machine learning tasks such as large-scale model training and batch inference using those trained models, just to name a few. Thanks, Angel. We see AWS Batch getting used in lots of different industries. It's especially loved by groups who use workflow orchestration engines since these untangle the low-level infrastructure and job orchestration from the higher-level concepts like model training workflows or genomics pipelines. And they leave the practitioners to think about science and engineering instead of containers and instances. And that's just the beginning. As we're fond of saying here, it's still day one. If you learned something from this talk, then please consider giving us a like and subscribing to the channel so you can find out when more videos like this are available. And if there's an area you'd like to see us go deeper into, uh, don't hesitate to reach out and let us know. See you next time.